I'm back. I'm back on the air again. Oh, how I hated leaving a couple of years ago. I cried and I cried on TV because I had to leave everybody and I had to leave my beloved station. But my husband, you know, said, honey, that's enough. We've been supporting you now on TV for this time. You got to stop now. But I didn't stop. I came back. I just polished whatever I had and was on Olelo and went everywhere and did little bitty shows. You know, God has a plan for every single person in this island. He has a destiny and a good plan for you. Psalms 143.8, I want to read your scripture because the word is what feeds you in the morning. You got to have breakfast and the word of God. Psalms 143.8. Cause me to hear thy loving kindness in the morning. When I had so many kids, I didn't hear the loving kindness. I, all I heard was the kids wanting to eat and all that in the morning. But now I'm alone so I can hear the Lord call thy loving kindness in the morning. For in thee do I trust, Lord. In you will I trust this morning, the whole day, to you. Cause me to know the way wherein I should walk. I cried, oh God, show me what to do today, every day. What can I do for you, Lord? Yes. Cause me to know thy way wherein I should walk, for I lift up my soul unto thee. I lift up my heart, my soul, my body, my spirit, everything that's in me. I lift it up to you, Lord, because I don't know how to rule my own life. I have to depend on God and the Holy Spirit to show me what to do. And I have to listen very carefully for myself to know and then I have to obey what the Lord says. Teach me to do thy will, for I lift up my soul unto thee, for thou art my God, and thy spirit is good. You intend for all good things to happen to me. You know, no matter how bad it is, God's got something good for you. I'll do an Oral Roberts. There's something good going to happen to you. There's a miracle coming into your life. God is walking in. Even if you don't know him as your personal savior, he's walking and talking into your life right now. And he's saying, I love you. I want you to be my kid. I want you to be my child. He's knocking at the door of your heart. I've never made a salvation call in the beginning, but why not start now? And we know that the blood of Jesus, yeah, this is my frou-frou. You're going to see all kinds of stuff around my set here. Some of it is from uh, Japan. Some of it's from China. And I don't know where this is from, but anyway, it's something. I have a little trademark. I love red. I love the blood of Jesus. I pray for the blood to cover you this morning. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, don't be, bad, bad. <laughs> don't be sad and don't be blue. For thou art my God, thy spirit is good. Lead me into the land of uprighteousness. Now, you can be led in the land of downrighteousness, which is the enemy who will try to lead you astray every single day. But you say, nope, I'm going to be uprighteous in the Lord. I'm going to stay up no matter what comes my way. My refrigerator died on me the other day. I still went ahead. Things happen to you in your life that you don't expect, but you still go ahead. And I have in my little book today, I have some wonderful guests that I want you to meet a little as we go on into the show. You know I never do things the way they do it on TV. I just go by the leading of the Holy Spirit. And we have our doctor, Jonathan, jo, jo, <laughs> Jonathan Hansen, who has been with us for a whole week of conference. And he's going to speak into your heart strength determination and destiny. He sounds the alarm all over the world to presidents and kings and people. He travels all over the world. This, his name is well known. And our darling, darling, Darlene Perry, who has sung, not sung, sang, but she has danced and was with the Don Ho Show way, way back before the Dome even came. And I'm going to talk story with her. But first, I want to talk story to you. Don't be discouraged, don't be afraid, for this is the day that the Lord has made. Don't be distressed, don't be depressed, for this is the day that the Lord has blessed. Trouble may come, trouble may go. This is all part of our life's ebb and flow. Nations may crumble and nations may fold, 
But this is a day to rejoice in the Lord, we are told. We will be tested in every way. Just stand in God's strength from day to day. These things will come, but they too will pass. Only what's done for God's kingdom will last. Don't be discouraged. Don't be afraid. For these are the days ahead that the Lord has made. When you find yourself in deep kimchi and trouble and things are happening double, just know this, that God is with you. He goes with you into the hospital. He goes with you into the operating table. He goes with you when you're under the anesthetic. He goes in with you when it's pathetic. He is there with you, dear. If nothing else I'm on the air for, it's to comfort you, edify you, and exhort you as a prophetess of the Lord and remind you that the blood of Jesus covers all of our sin. Though my sins be black and dark, the blood of Jesus removes every sin, every spot of darkness, and makes me white as snow again. This is a show to uplift you, to inform you, to make you know who you are, and I must tell you, this is a prophecy. I want to bless my people, the Lord said, beyond their wildest dreams. I want to bless my people beyond their wildest dreams. I'm going to bless that faithful one who is diligent in the word and an doer of my word. You don't just talk about the word, you do it. Amen. I will bless you as you delight yourself in me. Delight yourself in the Lord. I delight in you, Lord. With all of my might, I delight. Commit all your ways unto me and I'll give you the desire of your heart. That's what he's given me to be back on television with you again. That was the desire of my heart. Thank you, Lord. There is an army of God's people marching forth to see victory on every in every situation. Get ready to march together, each in step with the other in perfect harmony and love and spirit. As a Christian body, we have not always done this, but we're learning now how to fear God and learn wisdom and walk together and love together and stay in unity. I just threw that one in, all right? <laughs> Get ready to march together, each in step with the other in perfect harmony of my love and spirit. Know the rank and the call given to you. Yeah, you've got a rank and a call. Many of you are captains and lieutenants and generals, your apostles, your prophets, your teachers. You may be a pastor and you should be an apostle. You may need to be out on the mission field and you're not there yet. It is not impossible. All things are possible with Christ. I do not lead you out. He said, know the order I ask you to step in. I do not lead you out in confusion, but in trust. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. He'll direct your steps. He will, he will, I promise you. He's done it so many times for me. I don't know everything. I have to call on the dear Holy Spirit to teach me and to guide me, to be my teacher, my helper up or everything he is to me. He's like a father or mother, or sister or brother, but he's your teacher and he'll never lead you astray. My army shall go forth victoriously and the battle shall be victorious pattern your life after your Lord he is the head of the great army the body follows the head leading every hand finger leg area and arm each part follows under the head of the body Jesus so follow the Lord let the joy of the Lord be your strength today when I was about 18 57 years ago yeah I'm 76 in August as a young girl of 18 in 1953, I was walking the beach of Oceanside, California for years, <clears throat> and for hours, I mean, excuse me, for hours, I stood looking out far into the Pacific Ocean. It was so wide. It was so deep. I, I stood wondering what lay beyond. I felt a drawing and a pulling. You're going to feel a drawing and a pulling. As I read these prophecies today, you're going to feel the Spirit of God drawing you and pulling you to come home to him first and then be obedient to him second and then to do the perfect will of God third and then you will be in the delight of your heart 
when you follow after Jesus Christ. Remember, the son never did anything but what the father told him to do. Jesus always said, God, what do you want me to do? And when they said, Jesus, you're good, he said, no, my father is good. He, even he took a humble place as a servant. It was so wide and deep, the ocean, I stood wondering what lay beyond. I was only 18 now. I felt a drawing and a pulling and a deep spiritual knowledge that someday I would cross the sea to an unknown future awaiting me. I looked at the world map and I discovered Hawaii was directly across the sea from Oceanside, where I stood on the beach. Hawaii is where I went 15 years later as a young married lady, 33 years old, with three children and one more on the way. And I've been blessed to live here for 42 years. In my heart of hearts, I believe God intended me to become a missionary to the Hawaii Islands. One night, at the age of 18, I had a dream that I was on the beach on my knees, digging with my hands in the sand, looking frantically for lost treasures. After finding them, I was so excited. I found pure sterling silver utensils in the sand, knives and forks, all priceless treasures, all beautifully made, practically, practical, useful, eating utensils that were priceless. There they laid on the sand, shining in the sunlight. I found them. I interpreted this dream as to why I've been living here in Hawaii these past years. The priceless treasures of silver that I found were Hawaii's people. Hawaii's people are not only beautiful and of sterling quality, but they serve God wonderfully. As useful, beautiful, shaped utensils in the hands of, yes, shaped utensils in the hands of the Lord. And they know how to royally feed God's people at his table. Plus they shine out, they shine out like silver on the bright sunlight, in the bright sunlight. They reflect the aloha sunshine to all the world. You are called here in the islands to reflect the glory of God. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine like the stars in the firmament forever. Win souls. That's the key to the heart of Jesus, is to win souls. He thirsts and hungers after more and more people to come to Him. This prophecy was given to me. My eye is upon my people, I love you. You are the precious treasures buried deep within the ocean. You know how much treasure hunters prize old things they find hidden deep in the waters? Well, you, my people, you, my people, are like my treasures buried deep in the depths of the earth. You shine like pure gold in the green waters. So often, my children, I hold you close to my heart like treasure found. I treasure you above all that is in your lovely world. Did you hear what he said? This is prophecy now. I treasure you above all that is in your lovely world. You've been sought and bought with a handsome price. My dear son Jesus paid the price on Calvary that I might claim you as my own. Many of you out there, Jesus is talking to your heart. He's claiming you. He says, you're mine. Why do you follow after the things of the enemy? Why do you run after those things in the world? You're mine. I have a plan for you, a wonderful plan for you. Yes, I know you're going through troubled times. Yes, I know it's hard. I know what's happening all over the world. But Satan is not in charge of the world. God is. Remember that. Get the bigger picture in your mind. Because we just say, oh, the enemy is just running the whole world. Everything's going bad. No, no, no. God is in charge. In my heavenly kingdom, I have streets of gold that look like a sea of shining glass. I have lovely 
stones and jewels and pearls and the gates of heaven. But my dears, there is no more precious treasure on earth or in heaven than my people. Someday soon after I found all my buried treasures, we'll be together. And you'll lean your weary hand on my breast. You'll lean your weary head upon the breast of the Lord and find sweet peace and perfect rest. You look into my eyes and all the years of pain will be forgotten. Why are we on the air? Because we want to share the love of God with you. It's so great. Maybe you know a little love from a husband and wife, children, life, people, friends. But until you know the great love of your life, you know nothing. I know nothing until I have His love covering me. And the guests that I have here today, they speak of that, Christ in us, the hope of His glory. And darling, I'm going to talk story with you first because you're going to be dancing. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk a little bit later about other things. You were born here in Hawaii, my lovely darling Perry. You were born in to Hawaii. Yes. And what happened after you were born here? And talk story with me about your life. All right. I was born and raised here in Honolulu. And, um, well. You were born and raised in Honolulu. And what happened after that? Um, were you born into a Christian family? Well, we were Catholics. Mm -hmm. That's a Christian family. Yes, and um, so we were raised in Kalihi Valley and attended Our Lady of the Mount. Mm -hmm, a little louder. You know, Catholics are wonderful people. They believe in miracles and they reverence God. And my husband used to be a Catholic, so I know and I love the Catholic people. And so you reverence the Lord. You knew God, even though you were raised in the Catholic, that was a good raising up. Yes. And so what happened after that, darling? Well, then I became, um, I became, I continued to um, become. You love dancing? Yes. Okay, as a little girl. I know you're a little camera shy this morning, <laughs> so I'm trying to pull out the word of you, all right? right. And did you always love dancing? Were you dancing as a child? No, I don't believe so. Um, I remember uh, one Halloween, my sister took me to uh, Halloween. Yeah. And I remember, I think I was about eight years old, and I was a hula dancer. So I remember that. At eight years old, you, be you put on the costume and you said, I'm going to be a hula dancer, not knowing that you would dance for many, many, many years. So you had a call to dance. So between that time, though, whatever you said on here, can you remember? Mm -hmm. It was good. You need to look. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. All right. Um, I began my professional hula career at the age of 16 mm -hmm. with our famous and legendary Don Ho. We kind of know tiny bubbles. We know Don Ho. Right. He was a big bubble. He was certainly a blessed person here in the islands to know. Go ahead, read right from okay. here. So at the age of 16, I became employed with him. And for many of the seven years, I was his um, featured solo dancer. You were a featured solo dancer. Now, this was before the dome. Oh, yes. This was at the Polynesian Palace. Oh, I've heard about the Polynesian Palace. Was that a pretty place? It was beautiful. Uh, so many crazy things happen in those days, in the late 70s, early 80s. Oh, they're still happening in these days. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened with you? Oh, so we also, I also accompanied him on his U.S. world tour. We traveled and performed in uh, 14 different cities as well as Canada wow. in 1980. Wow. So that was a remarkable experience too. That was a remarkable experience. All of that chalks up to making you a better dancer and performer. Yes. And so from, what happened? From the Don Ho show, I then traveled to different Polynesian shows throughout Waikiki and featured um, 
you know, Tihatis and Palani Vaughan, Waikiki Calls, and toured the many different islands as well as Guam and Japan. Wow, you've been everywhere, girl. So then in 1995, I started my own hula company called Hula To Go, which incorporates assi assisting my um, kama'aina who do not have the time to take regular hula classes. So they might just say, I have a wedding, I have a funeral, I have an anniversary, can you please teach me a special event, a special song for my special event. And so I do hula workshops that way as well as for my Malahini art tourist. That's wonderful. You were giving a part of yourself away to help them to grow and do what you're doing now. And you know, you're not through. You're not through. God is giving women in these day and age now, this day and age, more and more strength and more and more verb that means enthusiasm to live longer and God has got a lot ahead of you what else did you do did you get it all here on your well then I began um, my hula company began in 1995 and then in 2000 I began hula to go in Japan so for 11 years, I've been traveling back and forth to Japan, instructing over 200 workshops there. Wow. And uh, I just love the enthusiasm that the Japanese have for the culture and the arts of hula. And it brings me great pleasure and joy to see what they have accomplished. Because of you, because of the beauty of God in you and the hula. And you were given that when you were a little girl, while you were yet in your mother's womb and you didn't know it. Do you know, folks, that many of our talents and gifts are given while we're yet in our mother's womb and we don't know it? I always said my daughter was singing in there with her microphone because she loved to sing in my womb. Anyway, go ahead and tell me now. You were in Japan teaching that many. Wonderful. Then what happened? Well, I just continue to travel back and forth. My students either come here to take my lessons or I travel there. I've also just started a Hawaiian women's line, a women's design line, uh, eco-friendly Hawaiian design accessories for women called Luna Malie. Well, what does eco-friendly mean? Well, Does that actually, mean we are dressed in a cardboard or something? Or what, what does eco-friendly well, mean? It's, you know, made with Hawaiian fabric designs, oh, like and this. yeah, this is what you were talking about. These, yeah? this is my hula bag. Hula bag, I love it. Well, these are for the students that can carry all their notes and folders, pinacola, their pencils, all in one. Make a bag. Cute with a sunglasses. I have about a dozen items, not yet marketed yet. Just a few things to start with, though, and computer and all the good stuff. That is beautiful. Beautiful. But he also gave you something, <laughs> a couple of these good things. Tell me what this is all about. All Just right. hold it right there. This is my uh, Hula Instructional DVD, and I had produced it and marketed it to my students as well as just people that purchase it on my website. It incorporates three different levels of hula, your beginning, your intermediate, as well as advanced. It has five different basic hula steps on it, as well as $3,000 worth of aerial views only seen by helicopter of all the Hawaiian Islands. Really? Oh, that sounds interesting. Hawaiian Classics, Hula to Go Presents, Kalene. Is that your name? Yes. Instead of Darlene, it's Kalene? Uh-huh. Beautiful. To be able to see from above down into the beautiful islands and not have to take a plane and, and all, this is great. And you have several other books too, don't you? I mean... Uh, uh, this is the only one right presently. Yes. Oh, okay. And you're going to have more though, aren't you? Eventually. Eventually. Yeah. Yes, you will. What did the Lord tell you, or when did you receive Jesus Christ in your heart? It was Look right into the camera. I received the Lord in April of 19... Sorry, it was 1985. And my life has never been the same again. I believe that. For the good, 
it's been good even when it was bad. Yes. Right? He is the one that takes us through. And look at you, you're still beautiful, you're still vibrant, you're still ready to dance and teach people. You have just begun, you've only just begun, dear heart. God is going to bless you, and I don't want to make you cry, because it's hard for us ladies to make our makeup <laughs> when we cry. What is your song that you're going to dance to? Uh, the song is called The Prayer by Ho'okena. Oh, this is beautiful, and I'm going to take this off and let you get ready to go up. You take that mic off. All right. Hey, we've got all kinds of surprises for you today. Yeah, and I guess the most surprising while she's getting ready thing is to see this in my hands. I have a very good friend called Liz Bennett, Lisa Bennett, and she used to be a hoochie mama, but she is a Christian mama now. And we have fun talking about these things. Now I want to present to you our lovely Darlene and her beautiful interpretation to the Lord.
Beautiful, beautiful, darling. Thank you so much. I can see the beauty of the Lord in you. Folks, I've got news for you, a news flash. The Spirit of the Lord said to me, this wave coming in is like a tsunami wave coming in, but it is going to do great destruction to the enemy, not to the people of God, to the enemy. My book says, spiritual warning. A spiritual tsunami is headed towards our Hawaiian islands. Get up to higher ground to watch God's glory come flooding in. It means get into the Lord. Get into the water of the Holy Spirit. Get into God. Thank you, sweetheart. That was beautiful. <laughs> that was really what's beautiful. I love you. This wave coming in is a great spiritual wave of God's love coming in to do great destruction to Satan's kingdom of doom and gloom. Love will co overcome evil every single time. That's what I found out anyway. After it washes in, there will be much spiritual construction and spiritual instruction, and God will touch all the peoples of these islands by healing the brokenness of spirits, of bodies, with his mighty roaring rush of living waters, waves of his glory coming in one after the other. The Lord revealed this to my spirit in January 2002. A great spiritual wave and tsunami is headed towards the Hawaiian Islands. A wave of love. We had two tsunami warnings, nothing happened. Hallelujah. We were there sitting in our apartments and our houses and nothing happened. I believe the prayers of the people kept the islands safe. I believe in the blessing of waves of righteousness and healing and miracles and signs and wonders that you've never seen. I've been waiting for 10 to 15 to 20 years to see this happen. I've been to two or three revivals. When I was a kid in 1948 at 13 years old and when I was a woman of 33 in 1961, I saw the Jesus Movement revival. I know what revival is all about and I'm expecting one. We've got our toes wet already. The Spirit of God is coming in to do wonderful things for these islands. Then we're going to talk to Doctor. But I want you to know what God said through a native Hawaiian, how he feels about even centuries ago, did my eyes fall upon the prize of the ocean. You are the prize of the ocean. You. Yeah. The Spirit of God would speak to his body and say, Despise not that which you do not understand. Listen to me and understand my purpose for this place. Yea, even centuries ago did my eyes fall upon the prize of the ocean. My heart was turned with compassion. I see my people here. Yes, precious in my sight was their blood that was spilled to come to this land to bring my message to proclaim the truth that I have. These men and women came by boat not by plane, but by boat. Great hazard, too. Some of them didn't live. They didn't have the conditions we have now. I did raise up men from this place, and my spirit did wave upon these people. I did break out upon them and with power. I did forgive their sins and make this land a holy place. And I shall do it again, says the Lord. I shall do it again, and I shall explode upon them with the power of my spirit. I am hungry for my people to once again respond to this place, that this place would not be a byword, but it would be a polished stone among the islands. Yea, I have sharpened an arrow in your hand. Will you work with me? If I have chosen this place to be the tip, allow me to sharpen you, says the Lord. Great waves of God's awesome love, mercy, and healing are on the way, people of Hawaii. That's why I came back on the air again. To bring you his waves of love. It will be like a royal flush of living waters flooding over people's lives clearing out all of yesterday's debris, washing us clean through the very power of his magnificent shed blood. God's people will be glorious and victorious, spilling over into other broken lives, bringing life back into broken people, 
to heal the broken hearts, the minds, and the souls that are dead to Christ. Yes, there are dead, stony, cold hearts that don't know Jesus yet. It's up to us as Christians. God will show up and he will show off all his magnificent mercy to the lost and the forgotten. You feel lost and forgotten? Sometimes I do. You say, ah, oh, Phyllis, how can you feel lost and forgotten? We all do. Until we're found by Christ. And once we're found by Christ, we're brand new individuals, new creatures in Christ Jesus. People will not be able to hold off the glory flow. They will be washed clean, made brand new as they walk in the flow of His love. That's what the love of God does. It cleans you up. It cleans me up. It makes me to consider other people than just myself. You're very selfish. We're very selfish. We're just thinking about ourselves and our own things and our own ministries and our own whatever, our own families. We've got to think about other people. What's happening with them? All things will be made new. You can't escape his love. You will be drenched in his glorious Holy Spirit flow. Oh, I can hardly wait. When this happens during revival, you're on the phone talking story to somebody. Did you know who just got saved? You know that bugger down there, the street, that womanizer, that guy? He got Jesus. And you know that guy that had so many drugs? He's off of the drugs. His high is now in the Lord, not on the drugs. Oh, man, did you hear about? I know what revival is about. But most of all, revival is repentance. And that was what is, that's what's coming with the love of God will bring repentance, all right? All things will be made new. You can't escape God's love. You will be drenched in his glorious Holy Spirit. These wonderful billows of his love will come to literally shake up and wake up all the peoples of the islands. These waves will rise up powerfully to overthrow the kingdom of the enemy. This is a prophecy given to me, dear folks. All right. That means a word from the Lord. A prophecy means a word from the Lord. Love will overthrow the kingdom of Satan's gloom and doom and darkness. He will literally be drowned in the overflow and all his plans defeated. For such a time as this, God will reign in the precious anointed and appointed islands of Hawaii. These tremendous waves of his royal flesh will come to overcome and pull down all the strongholds of the enemy. There's so many strongholds over the island. John Austin said he saw that. But he also saw in his dream, when he went up into heaven, he talked about it one time. He saw waving hands from seashine, seaside to seaside, or seashore to seashore. And they were praising God because they were set free from all the devil's dark deep demons and entities that cover over these islands. These tremendous waves of his royal flesh will come to overcome and pull down all the stronghold of the enemy base there. It's God's time now to wake up all his sleeping beauties. You and I are the sleeping beauties. Wake up. The army of the Lord. We are the sleeping beauties. Repentance will be on the lips of people, crying out because of the greatness of the Father. The blood of Jesus will flow out to wash men and women clean from their sins. Clean. I want to be clean. I don't want to be mean. I want to be clean before the Lord. He's coming soon, folks. I got to be clean. So do you. God's army in Hawaii is rising up to join the other armies of the Lord in the earth, which are Dr. Jo John... Our Dr. Jonathan Hansen will be talking in just a minute about. God's love will be victorious and prevail and overcome many evils. He will shower these islands with good things and prosper the people as they trust in the Lord with all of their hearts. Great spiritual instruction will flow and great spiritual construction will follow. And that has to be so that the enemy can't destroy the good works that God has planted, the seeds that God's planted here in these islands. Broken people, broken hearts, spirits, and minds will be joyously made whole. It will be a marvelous time to see a wake-up call to all saints and sinners alike. It will be one victorious time for people to respond quickly to the Holy Spirit's call and be a part of the glorious army of the living 
Lord. We will, as a true body of Christ, see battles won victorious, miraculous signs and wonders will follow, men and women of God. Things will happen before our very eyes. All praise and glory will be directed to the Lord of Lords and King of Kings as it will be not one man's doing, but all of the Holy Spirit's working. And with that, I give it over to you, my dear brother. Thank you for allowing me to read the word of the Lord. What did you feel as I was talking about that on the air? I felt that uh, that rhema word that brings life. Life. And God has eternal life for you. We must understand that God is shaking the nations. I've been in the Hawaiian Islands now and ministering but I travel to the nations where God gives a prophetic word. I move as an apostle and a prophet. But before we get into that, let's just look a little bit from Mark chapter 16. I'm going to read it to you. You might not have time to turn to it. But Mark chapter 16, I'm going to read verses 15 through 20. And he said unto them, Go you into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. And so then, after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and set on the right hand of God, and they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working th with them, confirming the word with signs following. Now, just remember those words. Now, if I had time, I'd also look at Luke 24, 46 to 43, but we don't have that time, as well as Matthew 28, 18 to 20. But it talks about our commission, power of attorney. You and I are ambassadors to the nations, to Hawaii, to bring the gospel, to bring good news. Prophetess Phyllis, bringing good news, exhortation, encouragement, comfort. Now we do know that before the Lord returns, we're going to see World War III, international peace plan for the Middle East. We're going to see the temple rebuilt, the abomination of desolation, the great tribulation with the mark of the beast and the battle of Armageddon with the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, what you do need to understand is nobody, nobody can touch you unless God allows it. Did you hear me? Nobody can touch you. These words, power of attorney, I move throughout the world with power of attorney as an ambassador, at times I am picked up with the president's limousine right at the airport. Now we're talking about a direct prophetic word, like the president of Zaire where I gave warning, life over all of East Africa. Unless the president of Zaire repents, his name was Mobutu, from the beggar to the president, unless the nation repents and the government repents, President Mobutu will be chased from office, his government will collapse, the nation will fall. Now you must understand, five million people in Zaire slaughtered like animals. Why does God have to eternally judge? It's out of love. Because the prophet Isaiah says, if God doesn't judge, the innocent become prey. And Satan hates the seed of Jesus Christ. And all around the world, he's attacking the church. That's the love of God, judgment, to stop this insanity. So Jesus rules instead of men through Lucifer. Love is judgment, not against you and I. Our sins are forgiven if you've received Jesus Christ, but it's come against the enemies of Jesus Christ, the enemies that want to do you harm. Within seven months, President Mobutu was chased from office. He died in exile as a thief and a murderer, exactly what I warned about, live, all over East Africa, live. His government collapsed and the nation fell, and today it's called the Republic of Congo. And I just had the governor of Congo in my television studios in America, and I'm going once again now to Zaire, which is now the Republic of Congo, to give the word of God. Can you say amen? amen. 
Amen. Now listen, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going back to Burundi. I gave a prophetic word clear back in 98. We don't have time to go into it in detail. But I spoke in front of the parliament. I had a word for the president. And God started to use me in a word of knowledge right in front of the parliament and showed me the sins of people in the room. One of you has shot a man in the face. Sir, you killed him. Another slashed a man across the face with a panga. Sir, you killed him. God started to expose murder. That's a word of knowledge. Knowledge you wouldn't possess. And I'm leaving in two days tomorrow. I'm meeting with your president. But for each one of you that is guilty of murder, if you don't stand right out and confess your sin, when I leave, every week I'm gone, one of you that is guilty, you will die. And you will know God sent a real prophet to Burundi. Every single word came to pass. Five people came up and confessed over murder. Ten years later, a new president was in office. He received the word of the Lord. Two of the members that were in that parliamentary session told the president there was a prophet that came. This is what he said. Everything came to pass. Bring him back. I've been to Burundi one time, laid hands on the president, prayed for him. He's invited me back. He said, Reverend Hanson, Apostle Hanson, I want you to come back, hold a nationwide crusade meeting in Bujumbura, lead my entire nation to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you, everywhere I go, people see this huge angel behind me. I have death threats because if you're representing Jesus Christ, the enemy will try to attack you. And when people have risen up to try to come and attack me, they have frozen. I'm telling you, nothing can touch you unless God allows it. Once again, nation after nation after nation, people see this huge angel behind me. I was in New Mexico. Not only did they see this huge angel, not only in the conference, but in the church meetings the next day, but they saw four other angels behind me as I was giving the prophetic word that nobody would interfere, rise up, and try to stop the word of the Lord. And those angels were doing intercession. I could tell you every miracle you could think of. People rising from the dead, what they saw, whether they, God gave them another chance as they saw the fires of hell and the demons and screaming as they were dying, or what they saw in heaven. I could tell you these stories. I could tell you every story you could think of, of, of blind eyes seeing, uh, deaf ears opening. Uh, I was in Uganda preaching a prophetic word to the nation. It was billed as a word to the nation because under Idi Amin, a prophet under Islam, they had slaughtered 500,000 Christians. I came in, I fasted 18 days. Because again, when, when, you oper when, when you're flesh and blood, sometimes you're fearful that you're gonna be killed yourself. I had to fast to draw on the strength of the Lord, the Holy Spirit documented in, in written for words. So I inhaled this Holy Spirit. And when I knew I had enough strength, I broke the fast and I went with that power of the Holy Ghost. Three days. A word to Uganda. The first day in front of the masses, uh, the parliamentary leaders were there. Uh, church leaders were there. The intellectuals were there. Thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of people. As they were singing, the Lord said, pray for that person. Now, I didn't come to do miracles, to see miracles. But miracles follow true repentance. But God said, pray for her. Now, I would have never done it if I hadn't fasted 18 days. She was in a crowd, a sea of masses, thousands upon thousands of people. I was on this huge platform with bishops and pastors all around me. And yet this lady had a neck brace on. And I pointed her out. I said, will you come forward? And I asked the thousands of people, including members of parliament, do you believe God can heal her now? Nobody said a word. I looked at the lady. When she got up from her seat, she was crippled over a hunchback, not only a neck brace on, but she was born a hunchback, a crippled at the gates of the city. And nobody said a word when I said, do you believe God can heal her? I looked at her, I said, do you believe God can heal you? She nodded her head, yes. Now I could barely touch her. And when you touch, virtue flows out of a man or woman of God as the anointing touches it. And as I could barely touch her, she fell over backwards. She started to scream. Nobody was behind her. Nobody expected a miracle. She hit the floor. You could hear crack, 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 crack. She threw that neck brace off and she ran through that stadium shouting and praising God. And I said, just leave her alone. She would have run you over. Mm -hmm. It was a miracle. A born hunchback. Crack, 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 crack. 
God put everything in order, a creative miracle. And that's the God you and I serve. That is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And that's the God that still is alive. Now, I'm going to be this very Sunday at Resurrection and Life Ministries, 9.30 a.m., 9-1-1841 Fort Weaver Road, Iwa Beach, Hawaii, Resurrection and Life Ministries. And we're going to be praying for the sick. Let me tell you what, I've seen every type of disease healed you can think of. I was just in Texas and New Mexico, just in it. MS, multiple sclerosis. Two people there, one in a wheelchair, the other leaning up on crutches, gurgling, because there's no cure. The power of God came upon me. It was a conference, but I walked over, and I started to pray anyway, and came against that spirit of infirmity. They both fell over. I moved on. The next day, I was at another meeting. But here, these people had followed me, and they said, do you remember me? I said, no, because I prayed for so many people. I was the one with the MS in the wheelchair. This other one was on the crutches. Now they were dressed in, in athletic uniforms, in, in tennis shoes. They said, we were totally, totally, totally healed instantly. Two other people in oxygen tanks that very Sunday morning as God's anointing came upon me and we rebuked that spirit of infirmity, they took off those oxygen tanks and we went out and had lunch. Oh, that is so great. <laughs> this is the God we serve. Amen. This is the God. And you are the man that's sounding the alarm all around the world. Sounding the alarm to the nations, giving a prophetic word, ministering apostolically, uniting the church so the church around the world can rise up and do battle for Jesus Christ. And she will. And she is. The bride will come forth. For a little while, she's kind of whacked out, but she'll be decked out pretty soon. You know, I didn't have time to go into the word uh, for America or the Hawaiian Islands, but look at my website, www.worldministries.org. I have a running newspaper on the bottom half of the front page. On the top half, you see buttons. Click on Prophecy. Every continent will appear. Click on North America continent. You'll see the United States flag. Click on it, and you'll read what God is saying. The main thing I want to get across to you is you do not have to be afraid because God is in control. The angels are around you. The blood is over you and nothing can touch you Amen. unless he allows it. Amen. And with that, we're going to start to wrap up a little bit. And I would love to just take this beautiful feather and wrap you up in the blood of Jesus. Dear one out there who is hurting so bad that maybe you can't understand all that we're saying right now. We pray that Thank the you, Holy Jesus. Spirit will come into your heart through Christ coming into your heart. The minute Jesus comes into your heart, God's Spirit comes down and joins with your spirit and you become a new man, yes. woman, boy or girl. Yeah, little kids need to become brand new creatures too. I know, I raised quite a few of my kids. God loves you. No matter how much trouble you've given the Lord or the Holy Spirit, no matter how you've grieved the Holy Spirit by the way you've lived perhaps, God is a forgiving God and He forgives you and me every day, every minute as we try hard. You know, it says that the Holy Spirit is in us helping us to obey the call of God. You're called, you're anointed, and you're appointed to go. And we are going to be going now too. And I want to thank you, Darlene, for the beautiful dance and the Lord that I saw in your eyes and I see in your eyes, honey. It was beautiful. You. May you continue to dance for Jesus. And may you continue to speak boldly for the Lord everywhere you go in every nation. Amen. And we thank you that you will go forth and you will preach the gospel to all the nations and not be afraid. Don't be afraid. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. We love you now. And we're going to say goodbye to you. And all of us, we're going to, this is an old thing that I used to do on all my other six shows or six years of shows is wave goodbye and say, we got about a minute. Oh, so much can be done in one minute. 
One minute you can ask Jesus to come into your heart. The next minute he will come in. The next minute you'll be a new person. The next minute, the next 30 seconds, hallelujah, you will be full of the love of Christ. We love you. We say goodbye now. Wave, guys. Goodbye. Thanks for coming. Aloha. We got a